Hello and welcome to another episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. I'm going to take a few minutes to talk about InDesign CS5 and exporting out EPUB formats, which actually is the book format for the iPad. I've written my first iPad book or iBook. It's called 25 Tips for iPad. So let me talk about how you would do this inside of InDesign. So the first thing is when you create your new document, it really probably doesn't matter too much about the size, but let me talk about what I did here. I created a five and a half by eight and a quarter, which it will do the math for me, book that is facing pages and tall. Once I did that, then I basically created the cover. Now the cover itself has to be one thing, one graphic. I did mine inside of Photoshop. You can do yours inside of InDesign, but you can't put the individual pieces here because of the way the EPUB format works. So stop thinking about the way you use InDesign today from the standpoint of you can put anything anywhere you want because of the restrictions of the EPUB format and all the various readers out there. So this is one graphic in one frame, however you wanna compose that graphic. Now, the next thing is I left the second page blank and the third page I also left blank because that's the page that was going to be my table of contents. So once I was done with the book, I used the table of contents feature inside of InDesign to generate the table of contents from my heading one style sheet. So that's the next thing is you're gonna want a table of contents, although that table of contents won't actually appear in the publication itself it will be a part of the navigation of the publication. So that's an important distinction. So you won't see that in the actual book, but it will be there in a the sidebar for, for navigating. Then the next page is blank, and then this is where the actual book begins. Now, if we look at the pages panel, we can see that my master pages are pa master page A up until that first page of content for the book. It's master page B. And what I did was I put a default text frame on master page B that will basically auto flow or basically create new pages as I create content. So if we go here to the type preferences, there's the smart text reflow inside of InDesign CS5 that will automatically add pages as I fill them up. So think about it just like a word processor. As you begin to type, it will add more pages as necessary. Now, speaking of those pages, on this page, there is a headline and body style. So if we double click here in the headline, it's called heading one. We, if we click here, it's called body copy. And I think I might have a heading two for the subheads. The main things I needed here were heading one and body copy. Everything else is optional. Now, what this means is that it will basically, or I should, shouldn't say the word basically too much, but it will use your headline for your table of contents and also there's a special feature inside of CS5 now that will use that to be your page breaks. So what I wanted was every headline to be a new page. Now let's get next, let's do the next thing here and let's talk about the graphics themselves. The graphics are actually inline graphics. Again, InDesign lets you put anything you want anywhere you want, but the EPUB format isn't as forgiving. So what I needed to happen is for each page to flow from page to page, and I also wanted or had to have the graphics flow with the text as well. Now, how did I get it to flow the actual um, page to start with the head heading? So if we click in the headline here and we double click on heading one, one of the options you have is the ability, and if we go here, let's see if I can find it here. You have the ability to have it uh, create new or, or next frame basically is what I'm looking for here. It will go to the next frame based on, here it is, uh, based on the head, heading itself. So it starts the paragraph in the next frame. And then that's how I had it start each one on a new page. Now, the next one is, uh, let's see here. We've got our graphics, we've got our headlines. Your graphics themselves can be any format that InDesign supports because again, when you do the export, it will convert the graphics for you to the format it needs. Now, don't worry about the font you choose or the styles you choose because again, all of that's gonna be determined by the device that's reading it. 
So I did Myriad Pro here, but when I look at this on an iPad, it looks totally different. It's red, but it's not Myriad Pro. It's a different font. It's the font that's built into the device. All right, so we get all the way down. The only other thing I need to uh, just caution you about is, A, you have an option to put in hyperlinks. I've done some here. But those hyperlinks, you have to be concerned about how long they are. For example, at the beginning of the document, I have some hyperlinks to my books on Amazon, and those links are extremely long, and I got an error when I exported it. It took me a, a minute or two to figure out that the length of the uh, links were causing the problem. So I just used a URL shortener like tinyurl.com or bit.ly to shorten those URLs for those links, and then I was able to put them in just fine. All right, so now you've got your publication, you got the idea, everything flows from one page to the next, everything is in line, now what? Well, now you do your export. When you do your export, we actually call it out inside of InDesign CS5, it's called export for EPUB, and that is the standard format for just about every reader out there, every popular reader, just about, including the brand new iPad. So when you do your export, uh, we'll just do a test one here. Uh, you have three panels. Uh, the first panel is pretty much checked off the way you want. You do have the option of viewing it after you export it in our free Adobe Digital Editions player that you can test your uh, EPUB in. And your images, again, will be formatted automatically. And the only option I chose here was to do high quality instead of medium quality for my JPEGs. Uh, it'll make them a little bit bigger, but it'll make them look a little bit better. Now, last but not least on this last panel, the one thing you definitely need to, you definitely need to be concerned with is it's unchecked by default. You want to check include table of contents entries because, again, this is going to be your navigation. And you want to use the new option in CS5 of use the first level entries as your chapter breaks. This is what actually takes my headline and makes it a new page inside the iPad or the device. And then this last one, suppress automatic entries for the document because I don't want it to put in its own navigation because I've done my own with the table of contents. So once you've done that, you hit export and it's amazingly fast. I mean, it happens so fast, I think something's wrong, it's done. All right, so now let's go out on the desktop and see what we got. There's our test. And here's the one I did earlier, so we'll just get rid of the test. And I can actually preview this right in the Digital Editions player. I can actually look at it, test it, scroll through, see all my pages, see all my links. Again, see my reflow, hit my navigation. It all works great. All right, so now let's quit out of the Adobe Digital Editions player, and let's talk about the iPad or getting it onto the iPad. Of course, that happens through iTunes. And basically, you bring up iTunes, and then at this point, you simply take your EPUB that you exported out of InDesign and drag it right into the library area of iTunes. And that will add it as an EPUB book, a legitimate book that you can sync to your iPad. But before you sync it, let's add some metadata. Let's hit Command-I. Let's do two things. Let's uh, break up the name and use the file name so we'll make the name a little bit better. We'll say that I'm the artist because I am the one that wrote the book. And we will add the cover image. I don't like generic looking icons if I can avoid it. So I've got a nice cover image here in, as a JPEG. We'll just choose that, click OK, and now there is my brand new first, first created EPUB document ready for any digital reader and including the iPad. It will actually show up in your iBooks application the next time you sync your iPad. This book is available for you to download free of charge on my website, terrywhite.com slash techblog. Also, you'll find it on bestappsite.com, so you can load it on your iPad to test it, and, of course, see the tips that I wrote, 25 iPad tips. So I got a chance to kill two birds with one stone, showing you how to create an uh, EPUB, and, of course, getting my book out there for people to view and test and play with. So that's it for this episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. Find out more at terrywhite.com or bestappsite.com. Thanks for watching.